Hey guys, and welcome back to the Anchored Healing Space. Today, we're going to be chit-chatting really quickly. Let me give a disclaimer. I do live in the city, so if you guys hear any type of noises like cars or anything, I do apologize. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible so that we're not here all day. But I want to share five lessons that I'm taking away as we're phasing back into the real world or normalcy as we would call it after this lockdown quarantine. So as you can see, it is titled Quarantine Conversations with Kwanye. Even though quarantine is pretty much over, I just wanted to share five lessons uh, that I've learned throughout this time. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Feel free to grab your favorite drink. I am drinking tea. I have some Beach Bellini, Peach Tranquility, and Jay Citrus Mint all together. No sweetener. It is perfect without it. And I'm also drinking some alkaline water. So just grab your favorite drink and let's check. Okay, so number one is I needed this time to pause and reevaluate my life's education slash career goals, every aspect of my life. So for me, I am a person who writes down everything. Um, I'm a writer, number one. And I just love, like, I know some people like to write their goals down, like in the like in their phones and their iPads, their tablets, their computers, whatever. But me, I have to have that pen and paper. I'm a pen and paper girl. So for me, I am like adamant about writing out my goals and writing out a plan to achieve the goals and also just checking back in with myself to make sure I'm on the right track, to make sure I'm doing what I need to do to reach those goals. So for me, this time allowed me the opportunity to just sit back, you know, pull out the goals, pull out the plan, see where I am, if I'm moving towards the goal, if I'm in the same place or if I'm moving away from my goal. So, you know, just because life can be life and it can throw you lemons, you never know what may happen. So you always want to take time to just, you know, whether it's, you know, once a week, once a month, whatever your goal is, whatever that length of time is, just to make sure like you're checking in with yourself to make sure that you are not working against your goal and making sure that you are making the the right decisions to get to the goal. So for me, that was a big one. Number two. Number two is goal setting isn't enough without discipline. None of it will come into fruition. And this is super important because I am reading a book titled No Excuses by Brian Tracy. And let me tell you, it is a life changing book. One of my closest, closest friends, and I call her my sister, she gave me the book uh, as a gift. She gifted me the book years ago. And when I tell you, like once I cracked it open last, I started reading it last month. I was like so mad at myself because I waited so long to crack the book open and it was like literally sitting in front of me and I was not not that I wasn't ready to read it I just like I'm a, I love reading so I, I have I have a lot of books I have boxes of books literally and some that I even recently just ordered that I want to read and I haven't even finished the other ones that I want to read but I say all that to say I was so upset with myself when I started to read this book because it is life changing. Like it really goes down the list of the important areas of your life, whether it is finances, education, you know, career, family, marriage, fitness, health, all of that good stuff. And it tells you the importance of discipline and how to apply that to your life, checking in to see how disciplined you are, to see, you know, have you been disciplined? If not, why in it? Each chapter has a series of action exercises where you have to basically answer questions. You have to do some exercises to kind of set a plan for yourself so that moving forward, this book can honest, like can help you and you can help yourself when you increase and you work on and master self-discipline. Super, super dope. I'm excited. I can't wait to finish it. And I'm just pacing myself because every chapter not that it's intense work, but it can get intense depending on where you are in that area of your life. So for me, I realized that, you know, I could really like lock down on my self-discipline, especially when it comes to like my health and fitness. Right now, I'm I'm like semi there. Like I've been, you know, making sure I'm taking in my water like I used to, making sure that I am not eating after a certain time. I'm actually doing this intermittent fasting thing. I'm a few days in and I feel great. So it's not that I don't know what to do. Like I know exactly what to do. I've done the hard work, the drinking a gallon a day, the going to the gym, the meal prepping. I've done it and I've lost weight, but I wasn't disciplined enough to stay consistent. So I say all that to say self-discipline is key. If you don't have self-discipline, 
none of your goals are going to stick like not, none of your action plans are going to stick so that was a really big one self-discipline that was my number two lesson number three i was not investing enough time into myself my dreams my desires and my plans for my life so for me especially with the work that i do uh, i actually transferred to a, another location in february and it's under the same umbrella as what i have eight years experience in but it's a different aspect of the agency so i'm literally like learning a whole new aspect and with that like the training has not been super efficient like i am a i'm a quick learner i am a really great worker i have a great reputation um with my agency but if basically the training has been stressful okay and then we get hit with what well, we had to move and then we get hit with the the COVID we get hit with that and that kind of just changed the whole trajectory of how things were going so when I say every single day I was stressed out after work I was stressed out like I was coming home like getting in the shower watching some Grey's Anatomy eating and just trying to like collect my thoughts and prepare myself mentally and physically and spiritually to get up and do it again so what I'm seeing is I wasn't dedicating enough time to myself and my goals and my dreams and what I want. So whether it is for my blog, whether it is for my YouTube channel, whether it's for my season two of the podcast, I was not investing time into myself because I was just so drained. And what I had to realize is, you know what, that's not an excuse, okay? You Even though you're stressed out or drained or whatever, your goals, your dreams, your aspirations, they are important. They are super important they're more important than you being stressed out and tired so you need to get your butt up get it together right out the plan and get everything back in motion but you know especially working with like a nine to five or eight to four whatever you work it's so easy to be so tired from that that you don't like when you come home you don't invest time in yourself if you want your vision for your life to come into fruition you have to put that sacrifice in can't just come home and watch Netflix and just relax. You have to dedicate that time. So whether you spend just as much time as you do for your full-time job or half the time or majority of the time, it's important for you to invest that into yourself, into your business, into whatever you're birthing that you want to reach the world or you want to reach you know, your demographic. You have to put that time and that effort in. So that was one thing that I had to like just really, you know, shake myself like girl I know you're tired I know you're stressed out I know you are just exhausted but you know what is that going to do for your dream what is that going to do for your vision nothing so you have to just you know if if you can go to work every single day even though you're tired and exhausted you can work on your own vision and your plan for your life number four the importance of a morning and night routine I've had like a good three or four morning morning and night routines that I've created some of them I stuck to, some of them I didn't. And with working from home, for the most part, it didn't work because of me. <laughs> like, I was literally, like, staying up because I don't really sleep that well. So I was staying up longer than I should, and I was sleeping in longer than I should. But what I realized was that's not feeding me. That's not fueling me. That's, that's actually working against me in every single goal that I have because if I'm not well-rested and energized and rejuvenated how can I really you know show up for myself and show up for my my life I, I can't like I'm gonna be tired I'm not gonna be operating at my full capacity so for me I ended up just scratching the old night routine and morning routine that I had and I just you know cultivated a new one and I did you know I took some things that I used and I you know just scrapped some of the other things because they weren't really conducive to how I want to start my mornings and my day and one thing about me is I have never been a morning person but that is my goal that is my to be a morning person because I feel like when you're a morning person when you're up and at them when you dedicate time to you know set your day and set the intentions for your day it goes a lot better so for me I created a morning and night routine that I can stick to even after this is over. So whether that's getting up two to three hours earlier, one hour earlier, whatever it is for you, whatever that looks like for you. For me, it's going to be at least an hour or two because I want to dedicate that to journaling and meditating and stretching and 
write maybe writing out content ideas uh before i go to work so that way when i come home i can work on my content so for me that's a big one morning and night routine last but not least it is okay if you did not produce anything in this moment some of us needed this time to focus on healing and resetting so that we are successful in our production the reason why i wrote this one was because i was just you no know, like scrolling and i was like watching some people that i follow and they didn't say anything wrong but i just didn't agree wholeheartedly with what they were saying so some people were saying like if you did not produce anything in this time like if you were just sitting and resting and just being lazy you know quote unquote then you were doing something wrong for me i agree that this time should birth some type of enlightenment it should put a little bit of fire under your behind in certain areas it should also encourage you and motivate you and inspire you it should do something for you but i don't agree that if someone didn't birth a business or you know start a channel or start something that you know or produce anything basically if they didn't produce anything i dis i disagree that they are doing something wrong because a lot of people were operating at a high capacity with very low energy they weren't operating at a high frequency and at, at a high level like honestly a lot of people were just showing up and just you know going and going and going i feel like this time allowed many people to rest and recharge so that they are able to you know, process things differently and maybe they are able to spend more time to think about their creations and their business that they may want to create in their content or whatever that may be. For me, the majority of it, I did spend like catching up on my rest because a lot of us, including me, yeah, I don't really, I'm not really a active person as far as like going out to different things and, you know, being in the mix but i when it comes to like my family and my friends if they need me for something i'm going to show up for them like if they need my help the majority of my life i've been helping others i've been showing up for others and what i realized is it kind of like depleted my energy so for me this time it allowed me to just sit down and rest and just really like just take care of myself and just do what i wanted to do and to recharge so that way when it came time for me to create content and it came time for me to get back on the ball i'm like successful in my production this is the most consistent i've been especially with this channel and especially with like just dedicating time to create content and i know that sounds super redundant and repetitive but it really is literally what i'm living right now so this time, I, I just wanted to encourage people, you know, if you needed this time to rest and to heal in different areas, to drop dead weight, to, you know, make evaluate, you know, just reevaluate your life and your mental space, your spiritual space, your health, you know, your emotional space, whatever that is for you. If you needed this time to just be and exist and just like really tap into the core of who you are so that you can be inspired again and motivated again that's perfectly fine it is not productive or conducive to your life and to your goals if you are overworking yourself if you're producing from a place of deficiency if that makes sense like so for me when i get in front of you guys and i come and i we have these talks if i get when i get in front of you guys and i, and I want to share a haul or as as you know this this channel will be all like all encompassing so for the most part it's, it's it's a healing space so in everything that i do i'm going to be promoting healing so i think it's unfair for me to try to come before you guys and promote healing and provide a space for healing when i am not in a healthy space myself whether i'm mentally or emotionally drained or i'm experiencing some some uh some brokenness in the area that I may need healing. It is not productive for me to come before you guys in that type of space. Now, I'm not saying you have to be totally whole and healed for you to be able to produce and to operate at a high level and to reach people because at the end of the day, it's from many of my experiences that have damaged me or hurt me or, you know, whatever it may be that might not have been so pretty that I've been able to inspire and to get wisdom and to, you know, reach others. But I'm saying that to say that is, it's two different things. Like you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be all the way at 100% to be 
to produce at a high level to successfully produce but what i'm saying is the intention has to be right so i'm not going to get in front of you guys when i know for sure i'm not in a good space i'm not going to force myself now if god tells me to be like you know look turn the camera on and you're going to have to heal while you're producing like that's one thing but if the intention is set and i'm like you know what i want them to receive the genuine it's not going to translate that the way that I want it to translate if I'm not in a good space. So I'm rambling and I digress, but I'm sorry. If you did not produce anything in this time, it does not mean anything. You did not do anything wrong. You are not a failure. You're not lazy. You're not incapable of producing. It just means you needed time to devote and to invest into yourself, into your healing so that you can produce at a high level. So that's all I have for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to chime in in the comments, just go ahead and drop down there and give me your five things that you've learned. I really had like a good 10, but I wanted to try to keep this as short as possible. So I love you guys and I will see you guys in the next video. Okay.